Got it. Uh, Mr. Das would request if you could stop sharing your screen. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. So what is the order remains, right? I mean, first is Sandeep, then Nikhil, and then Jay, and then Priti. Yeah, that is fine. In case you want to make any change, it's up to you. Otherwise, that's fine. No, let's, let's keep the order, no? Whatever is yeah. Okay. So Sandeep is going to go first, and then Nikhil, then Jay, and then Excellent. You know, first of all, I'm really happy to see, you know, such talented people part of this panel. And uh, I hope that we will leave some value with our viewers today. Sure. I mean, thanks for taking the time out to do this. Yeah. So uh, for all your, in for information of all of you, we have, we are doing this sessions, so all the panelists are on the Zoom link, and this is being live streamed on CI Hive virtual platform. So uh, we are live now. It's uh, being it's already started streaming. So in another minute or so, we can start the session if that is fine, Mr. Chauhan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Great. So good afternoon. Good, good afternoon to everyone who is attending this call. First and the foremost, I thank uh, viewers for uh, taking that time, their time out uh, to attend this uh, sixth edition of uh, Global Dialogue on AgTech. And uh, then um, a big thank you to my uh, panelists, uh, the four uh, individual speakers who have a great contribution to the AgTech and uh, they will share uh, the exciting uh, technologies they are working on, what they have achieved and what they will contribute to what we seemingly see as a, as a big challenge uh, coming. And that challenge is, you know, uh, every, every quarter you get new report talking about climate and climate in next century, which says that uh, the temperatures would go up by about 2.5 degrees Celsius. Now, while this is a number to many, uh, we, we know that uh, if this happens, then what happens to agriculture, which mainly is a composition of three Fs, food, feed, and fiber. Uh, among that, you know, food is very important. So if that is going to reduce uh, the food production, and that too in a country where uh, the average yields in India are not uh, really globally competitive or comparable. So you have a challenge that climate is uh, impacting and reducing, may reduce the yields. So you had a century where the technology production went up, and then you have a century where with climate change, you have uh, this scale of production going down. And at the same time, you know, the population will go up and maybe, you know, next three decades, we will need like uh, 30 to 50 percent more production of uh, through agriculture. Now, how do you meet this? And um, like many challenges which uh, technologies or science face, which the science and technology likes, I mean, the world will rely on technologies. And that's where this dialogue is very apt. I would thank CII for organizing this. I think they have a very good reason for doing this because this is something which is a part of uh, India being now the president or having the presidency of uh, G20. So this is uh, um, on the contours of that, you know, the CII is uh, holding this up uh, as uh, G20, B20, um, because CII has the privilege of uh, being a secretary for B20. And I'm sure that the excitement which we will share during these panel discussions. Um, we will later on take a physical uh, event somewhere in the February, where the focus will be on G20 uh, countries. So with these preambles, I would go to the main subject of you know, our speakers talking about their technology. So we have uh, the first uh, Sandeep. And uh, instead of me introducing Sandeep, I think uh, you are in a good place to share about yourself, uh, your background, and then jump on to 
uh, your product and uh, what you have uh, in plans. Yeah. So the uh, to you. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste to everyone. Uh, it's uh, really a pleasure uh, uh, and a privilege uh, uh, to share, uh, uh, you know, to share our views and also to be present uh, uh, with all of you. Um, so. Just to give a background about myself, I am Sandeep Kondaji. I am the CEO and founder of Krishi Tantra. And uh, we, uh, Krishi Tantra, we founded in 2017. Uh, we are based out of uh, uh, Hyderabad and then Mangalore. Uh, mainly, we are working and focusing around the soil health. Uh, so today's uh, topic, which is very uh, relevant and apt uh, to the uh, today's agri, uh, the way agriculture has been happening. And uh, of course, soil being one of the uh, important and a fundamental component of uh, uh, for the entire agri value chain. Uh, so the problem that we are trying to solve here, uh, or uh, we are on our way to solve over uh, solve the challenges. Uh, today, the overall agri value chain, if you take, uh, it's totally. I would say that majority of the majority chunk of the agri value chain is missing, or the, the decision making is not based on the scientific practices which are happening on the ground, starting from the farmer uh, to uh, you take uh, input company uh, to financial company and even the supply chain. Uh, so for a farmer today, it's everything is blind, blind application of fertilizer. So there is no mean uh, or you know, a decision making ability for a farmer uh, to say that, okay, what is that I need to uh, you know grow on the given plot and also how much I need to uh, uh, what kind of composition of fertilizer I need to use and then what quantity. So this information is totally missing and uh, because it is missing now farmer is, uh, you know, uh, is helpless but to go with uh, uh, blind application of fertilizer. And at the same time, uh, most of the plots information is not available with the input companies in terms of the crop suitability and also what kind of composition might work over there. Uh, uh, for a biological company, if they want to sell a biological, so they don't know, uh, uh, you know, the information like what kind of uh, bacteria are there, whether or not that organic uh, menu, what they are going to supply in those regions are going to work or not. And at the same time, even for other chemical fertilizer companies, they don't have that, what is that uh, deficiencies in what kind of plot, right? So it is again, uh, passing that, uh, again, uh, 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 you know, uh, selling those, uh, commodity uh, selling those commodities in a region where it is where it is totally unknown so even a fertilizer company is blindly selling the uh, fertilizer uh, even for a seed company and at the same uh, same time you have uh, banks or lending institutes giving to a farmer or a crop loan or a crop insurance without having the uh, data on uh, the soil health condition right a soil condition might be very poor so you end up giving a crop loan to a farmer where the soil condition is very poor so the uh, 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 the uh, you know the uh, the probability of getting the right kind of uh, output is very minimal in a soil condition which is very poor, right? So this is a data source engine that uh, where Krishi Tantra is building, where uh, all these uh, plots will be digitized and uh, uh, the chemical estimation and the biological estimation of those plots are being done using a rapid uh, test methodology which is which we have developed called as Krishi Rasta, which is patented uh, in India and currently pending in US and uh, Israel. So this is a unit which basically estimates the, uh, uh, you know, the soil uh, parameters uh, like macro and micronutrients. And now currently we are adding other biological parameters uh, like uh, bacterial nematodes and fungi properties of the soil, where you know the plot and what is the consistent, uh, you know, what is that consist? So uh, how much amount of nitrogen is there, potassium is there, phosphorus is there, and what kind of crops could be suitable in those particular regions given that uh, climatic condition. You have other parameters which will, which can help this soil data and based on that you can come up with the crop suitability. And at the same time you have now what is the composition of fertilizer which can work there and in what quantity. So that is the first level of estimation that will be done and to a farmer we provide that as a soil health card where it will provide all this information and a very simple interpretation in terms of how many bags of which fertilizer needs to be applied, both for organic and inorganic. So then we have this data that we stored on the cloud where we have APIs that we share with other institutes where 
they can uh, consume it they can integrate and then they can build a planning a decision making tool for themselves and uh, that is the overall uh, product and solution that we are offering and uh, now uh, we are working in a model where we are developing village level entrepreneurs where uh, they can take uh, this particular device and they provide this as a service to the farmer so farmer need not own this because the very first uh, thing uh, you know today farmer are totally you know busy with the multiple activities so they are the ceo they are uh, uh, the operations they are the labor they are everything so to make the technology available in the hands of farmer has to be also very much in a very simplistic manner so we are developing that village level entrepreneur network where they purchase this and they also generate revenue by providing this and at the same time farmer gets timely soil test report and once the soil test is done Uh, the digitization uh, it is get it will get digi- uh, you know geo tagged and it will get onto the cloud so currently uh, re- uh, recently we also been uh, appointed by central ministry uh, that is uh, agriculture uh, ministry of uh, central government of india to manage uh, the soil health card portal uh, for the next 5 years and uh, this is the flagship program which government of india or honorable prime minister had launched that and uh, today we have the privilege of even managing that and there will be a common application that we are launching uh, very soon uh, which uh, central government will launch very soon which we are developing and hosting it uh, which will be used as a common application by uh, every uh, institute a vle or a kvk or anybody who wants to do the soil test so that way it will also be subsidized to a farmer uh, for the soil test so it won't be any more that farmer uh, doesn't have this information at scale this information will be available to the farmer and uh, the model and the stage is set now uh, we need to see going forward how this uh, enterprises will start consuming and start providing the scientific advisory uh, which can make this uh, smart input and the climate resilience part of agricultural concept thank you so sandeep uh, that was really concise um well, i'll ask i'm asking roli to share the questions if uh, somebody has uh, maybe you know uh, some data sandeep on you know how much uh, let's say the soil uh, under your technology you have tested you know the samples uh, are there any insights which are correlated to like uh, the subject of today for example you know uh, recently there was an article in uh, times of india and they were talking about uh, the carbon right organic carbon and 97% of the soil they have they found that it is deficient uh, in nitrogen right so uh, it would be really helpful uh, for our viewers to know i mean how much area have you covered uh, what is the acceleration you uh, know it brings visavi conventionally uh available alternatives that will be really helpful because what probably the viewers also would like to understand that how your products slash technology will accelerate mitigating some of these risks so you you really spoke good about how to how much to apply in terms of nutrient or slash treatment you get that idea but uh the key is how how that accelerates accelerates this process you know including lead time including uh, the cost and including ease of implementing it right absolutely so just for a data point of view so before krishi tantra so there is a lot of studies that have been done and institutes like national bureau of soil science there is a report in 1980 uh, in 1980 uh, uh, in 1981 the Uh, per application per kg of npk fertilizer that used to be applied used to give an yield of uh, 13 kg of grain output in a acre now coming fast forwarding to 2010 the same 1 kg npk fertilizer today you apply it will provide you an yield of only 4 kg so that is three times reduction for the same application of fertilizer so this has how this has led so it has led to blind application of fertilizer because you are abusing the soil by putting more fertilizer which is not required so and uh, chemical when you apply a chemical fertilizer it is uh, it will only the uptake by the plants will be only for for to an extent by how much it is required right yeah. and 
soil organic carbon and organic matter plays a huge role because that is the one which will give a conducive environment for the uh, microbiological activity as concerned so if you apply over a period of time uh, farmers have applied more and more fertilizers thereby degrading the biological factory in the soil so it has reduced uh the organic uh, you know the organic content and also you you know the microbial activity thereby the fixation of uh, you know unavailable nutrients uh, were, were not happening and the excessive salt that used to remain after after the plants consume started to leach inside the groundwater it used to contaminate and it, it started to develop uh, you know toxicity in the soil so thereby making most of the nutrients even today you apply 10 kg it will not consume so you have made the soil sick so this statistic is been there from long time and today it is even increasing so majority of the indian soils are having less than 0.3% of carbon so we have done so far about 50000 plus soil tests across uh, six different states in india now the data that shows is that organic carbon levels is uh, is at an alarmingly it is going down so 0.3 that means zero means it is a desert so if you remove the minus the entire organic carbon so we are nearing to become desertification right so and it will never be sustainable as you continue so in uh, 1980s it used to be about 0.6 0.7 kind of thing so it has drastically it has come down to 0.3 and it if you continue to abuse it will continue to deteriorate now the solution for this is that the farmers need to know at the right point the right point of time that what i need to do at this uh, you know before sowing the seed and for that to make it happen you need that infrastructure also at the same time so we are assuming that farmers don't adopt technology but where is the technology available so it is first of all you have to make it available and then awareness will follow so first you make the things available to farmers then it uh, think will follow on its own so if you see uh, post independence till date we have only 3800 laboratories across india which are majorly in tier 1 and tier 2 towns of uh, the country so it is not accessible to the farmer at all so even if it is farmer wants to do when most of the farmers have this similar complaint as everyone knows that if i provide my soil uh, sample to them then it takes uh, weeks months or it will never come on time to them so there is no hope on the soil testing at all so it has never become as a practice uh, so it has to make so the main point here is to make the technology available provide them the right set of advisory uh, sandeep i mean I, i'll uh, i think there is an apt question can uh, came okay so what is the key enabler enablers according to you to scale up this to scale up this is make every village uh, equipped with the soil testing center a facility where it can uh, where it can be accessed by the farmer first of all it has to be made simpler it has to be not that farmer uh, for a farmer it should not be a burden to go collect the sample and then provide it to a laboratory because they themselves they are overburdened with so much of operational activity this should not add up into one so without making any anything more difficult to them make it so simplified that you know a person goes collects the sample give the report on time it should be in that way if the service is provided then the adoption will follow so which are the six states you are currently uh, operational you said i mean you have the data about so we are majority so we are uh, uh, i mean uh, density wise more density wise uh, we have uh, maharashtra karnataka telangana andhra tamil nadu Uh, then we have uh, in other regions which is spread uh, very thinly but we are now expanding in pan good thank you thank you sandeep um, it was really uh, great uh, to hear your thoughts and i'm sure that uh, we viewers uh, viewers if they have more interest uh, they know how to uh, reach out to you so from here we will move out to our next speaker which is uh, nikhil das so nikhil if you can just open your camera and uh, uh open the mic yeah good evening good over to you nikhil thank you thank you randeep uh so myself nikhil uh so as uh, sandeep told uh, he is covering the soil part so here um, i am here with a solution which is on the seed what needs to be planted there right so um here like uh, we have a vision based uh, technology developed 
um, which will basically um, identify what variety of seed or uh, how much fertile or sterile it is. So all those things are possible using vision. So, uh, so it's a breakthrough technology which uh, had been awarded by uh, Bayrak and Seacamp uh, uh, with one of the like largest uh, innovation awards in India. So we secured uh, 50 lakhs from Seacamp and about 2 crore from uh, Bayrak for this particular technology. Um, so we are a two-year-old company. So before that, I'll just uh, brief uh, about myself. I am Nikhil. Um, I started my entrepreneurship journey back in 2006, where I found the first LED lighting company in India. And I could scale that to the largest LED lighting company in 2013. And 2015, the same company got acquired by Havels, <coughs> Havels Group. So then uh, I was a Havels Group CTO for about three years. Um, so uh, after leaving the group in 2019, basically with a non-competing clause. So that's where I ended uh, this agri space. Uh, so basically, I'm not an agronomist or uh, anybody uh, with the agricultural background, but purely a, a technological person. Uh, so here, um, uh, the technology what I've developed uh, is called seed vision. Um, so today, uh, to identify a seed quality uh, in the industry, what is being used is uh, is only destructive way of test testing, basically DNA testing or grow out test. Grow out test is much popular, like because everywhere it happens, uh, especially in the seed companies. Uh, the government had mandated them to do every lot uh, grow out test because DNA is not uh, being approved by any of the government bodies because like there are a lot of areas where uh, uh, people can um, play around with the markers. Right, so uh, grow out test typically takes like uh, three to six months of time based based on the crop variety. Uh, so once they grow this particular crop on the field, uh, either it, it has to be either in the flowering stage or in the fruiting stage to understand uh, what hybrid variety it is or uh, how much pure it is. Right, so this is this is a standard practice which has been followed by throughout the industry. But uh, since most uh, of these uh, companies need to go to market in a faster pace, say like paddy, we have um, the uh, growers will grow this paddy and give to the seed companies by say like uh, January, February timeframe. But these companies have a uh, tight timeline to sell this entire lot of produced uh, seeds in the market within uh, a time frame of like March and April, max is April. So uh, what they ha have is like hardly two months of time. So within this time, it is impossible to get this uh, grout test res result done. So uh, what, what they do is they go ahead and do the internal um, DNA testing and release this product in the market. And most of the time, there will be a lot of uh, uh, products which they call it as bulking, which is kind of an approved process. So wherein, what bulking means is, so they have, they'll have various uh, pure levels of uh, seed lots coming from various locations. Mm -hmm. So they will do mixing of this. So effectively, they need to achieve an uh, like um, achieve a purity of like uh, above eighty percentage. That's a standard which is set uh, by government, and it varies from crop to crop. So, uh, um, but um, on an average, we can say it is like eighty percentage is a re required uh, figure. What it means is. Uh, when a farmer purchase this particular thing and grow the, this particular seed on, on the ground, uh, he has to see like at least 80 percentage of the uh, plants which are matching this uh, 100 percentage pure lot. So that's a, that's a requirement. But effectively, uh, seed companies doesn't get this information within this short span. And they release this product in the market. And uh, nobody will come back uh, saying like, I didn't get the yield expected out of it. So that's a gut feeling which is running from so many decades in India. So, uh, but uh, today with this particular technology, what we have introduced, uh, they can identify this uh, particular lot, uh, the purity of the lot uh, um, uh, in just 15 minutes of time. So it's like a real time, we can say. Real time, they will be able to identify what uh, what variety it is, whether it is a male, male, female, a male seed or female seed or hybrid seed. Uh, everything can be identified within 
such a short um, uh, duration. And uh, this will even help the farmers to get his money uh, uh, recovered from the seed uh, producing companies quite quickly because most of the people act as growers for these uh, seed companies. So um, I, when it comes to this, um, uh, the impact of this particular technology on the climatic side is uh, huge because uh, see, as I told, uh, even government had mandated 80 percentage as the standard for majority of the crops, like field crops, you can say. Mm, assumes like uh, uh, we are cultivating in like, uh, it'll be in hectares, but still let's take like 100 acres of land. So uh, almost like 20 percent, 20 acres to 30 acre is, uh, is uh, basically zero output for him. So that's a kind of like um, wastage which is happening, wherein we are uh, applying all fertilizers and other thing like um, uh, so, uh, so all the sources will be applied on this particular uh, a, uh, area, which is uh, going waste. So j just the same thing you take uh, on a country level or globally, right? So that much of wastage is happening at this stage, uh, wherein no uh, no other technology could like uh, uh, bring in such a major impact in this particular space. So uh, uh, that way, like, um, so we uh, we have uh, uh, almost like six months back, we released this particular product in the market. Uh, so currently it is available with the uh, majority of the major players in India. Uh, so uh, it's like um, uh, we, we covered almost uh, 16 varieties of uh, seeds which are popular in India and um, all over like 1,000 hybrid types is already been trained in the system. So it's an AI ML based system. It's, um, so um, works on deep learning technology. Um, so that's about the product. So the product is deployed at, at what place, Nikhil? It's all in the seed producing companies right now. And I mean, what the product constitute of it will be helpful for viewers to understand. I mean, what the product is and is it a tunnel or what? Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll just show you one image. Hmm. Help you on this one. So this, what you see in this particular image is the unit. So wherein you can see on the left hand side, there is a funnel wherein uh, through which like we feed in the seed for testing. And there is a conveyor belt which will take this particular uh, seed to the uh, image processing unit. The one which is mentioned as seed vision is the image uh, processing section. So uh, in that particular unit, we have a spectral imager um, and uh, different types of sensors. So, um, so all these um, club together. Uh, it gives the like um, um, so it has a like very high end computing system so which uh, which ha which can process this particular information on the edge itself like on the syst system level itself it will process so the all uh, the whole unit is about um, one and a half meter in length and about a meter high so uh, it's a, a tabletop we can say. First of all, it's good, you know, thank you to Harwell that, you know, they had a, a non-compete with you so that a, a talented uh, talent has come to agriculture, you know, which is normally not a very attractive area for IT people. However, you know, um, see, in, in case of technologies and implementation of these technologies, are you currently facing any uh, issue with uh, regulators uh, in terms of uh, kind of uh, deploying this technology? No, uh, see, uh, especially this agri uh, segment, uh, especially the seed industry is a very slow adopter of the technologies. That's what I realized. Because um, if you really see any other segment, if we go and show showcase something with a very minimal uh, uh, POC, things will happen. But here it is like, okay, let everybody adopt it, then I will follow. So that's the reason, like I got only uh, uh, the top companies uh, purchasing this solution so it's like still the indian regular players are like still in that mode of like okay i will follow the traditional practice and <laughs> follow this but no but see in, in terms of government i think the regulator has got uh, two things to do okay one is objection also can be a, a obstacle right so approval is a help right so right. a, a NOC to the uh, deploying that uh, technology itself is a good 
I mean, big blessing from the government. So uh, the probably the the viewer has asked it from that point of view. Okay, that uh, you're. I mean, you're not facing any issues in terms of regulator that you know by deploying this and doing this process, you're not doing any damage to neither to the. Wait, state uh, uh, even in fact, this main thing is it is not a uh, destructive way of testing. So the seed is, it can be reused. So that way, like they can continue whatever been done, it becomes an uh, digitizing the data what they have. You have two more questions, uh, Nikhil. One is that a uh, are you discussing uh, partnership with large companies uh, to scale this up, uh, or do you have a plan? Yes or no? Um, and the second question is, is, I mean, give some idea about the cost of this solution. Is it cost? intensive or it's uh, cost friendly you know yeah uh, so uh, first um, i'll address the first question like yes we are looking for strategic partnership basically like we are not looking for an investment partner uh, because like a uh, good amount of investment had already gone in and uh, we have a very solid team based out of bangalore um, and uh, coming to the cost of the solution see currently one seed lot testing uh, if it goes for dna testing uh, it costs about 5,000 rupees per lot. And uh, uh, so uh, our, our solution is like cheaper than that. So right now we have placed it around 3,500 rupees per lot. And uh, when it comes to grow out test, grow out test being a time consuming thing, like which takes uh, three to six months of time. Um, uh, it, um, so effectively like um, uh, almost like 1,500 to 1,000 rupees the cost of a grow out test for per lot. Uh, which is considerably low, uh, but the time considering the time, um, so we uh, keep it at a little bit higher side compared to grow out test. Excellent. Uh, any co panelist has any question for Nikhil? Good. If not, uh, then I guess uh, thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. And uh, we are now ready to go with Jay. Uh, Jay, you may start with uh, introducing yourself and then jump onto the technology. Sure. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I think uh, I'll give all of you a little bit different view on what we're working on. Uh, you know, we are building robots for farmers. I think the idea for robots is always a human art in nature, but I'm going to present uh, today a few slides. Uh, what will be interesting for all of you is We've actually deployed these robots in India. And I think I think folks underestimate how advanced our Indian farmers are. Uh, I think there's this there's this idea that, you know, there's bullock driven farming that's uh, throughout India. And unfortunately, there are a lot of bullocks, uh, but there's also extremely progressive areas where farmers are ready for new solutions and we're hoping to attack them. So maybe I'll structure this. Uh, I know climate is the theme, but I think an uh, interesting uh, part of our uh, building the company has also been the journey. Uh, so I'd always like to touch on the journey uh, that that we've been through. It's it's not a pleasant one, but I think it's instructive of uh, what it takes to build uh, act up startup. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I'm assuming my screen is there, right? Wendy, can you see the screen? Yes, very much. Okay. Well. Right. Great. So, a uh, quick thing. Uh, we've tried a bunch of things. You know, we started off as a drone company. We miserably failed in that. I think uh, the long and short of that is farmers like solutions. They don't like advice. So, what we were trying to do with drones is we were trying to do analytical work. We fly over the farm and then give a piece of paper to the farmer saying, here's your problem. The farmer looked back at us and said, hey, if you know what the problem is, come and fix it. As simple as that. Uh, and I'm, I'm compressing this, but it took us three years to figure that out. So then uh, we said, no, we can't give up. Uh, let's build a land-based robot to address this problem. We built a land-based robot and we finally shipped uh, a land-based robot uh, to the farmer. And I think uh, what is interesting in that journey is, uh, and I'll show you the mechanical weeder robot that we built. Uh, what we found out is the gold standard for robots are much higher than human labor. So uh, actually it should be the reverse. Uh, I think nothing can nothing can compete against human dexterity and you know hardworking human uh, labor. And we failed in that as well. So you know if for example, our mechanical weeder robot 
we had a kill rate of 2%, whereas human labor had a kill rate of half percent. And again, uh, we had to go back to the drawing board. And finally, we, we kind of figured out what we need to build. So uh, I'll walk you through our AI precision spraying robot. Uh, and uh, I think that's exactly what is the theme of this uh, panel, which is how do you bring new technology with the climate lens and how can you do more with less? Uh, we raised $8 million in venture capital with a bunch of folks, strategic guys. I think uh, some of the co-panelists also raised money. Uh, but simply, what are we trying to solve? Uh, if you look at every farm today, uh, if you're a farmer, you buy pesticide on a per acre level and you spray the entire farm, uh, irrespective of whether plants are healthy or not. And if the analogy that I like to draw is uh, if you're a teacher of a class and you have 30 kids in your class and three of your kids are sick, you're not going to give the entire class antibiotics. But that's what's happening in farming today. Uh, irrespective of whether the plant is healthy or not, you blanket spray your entire farm. And our technology is hoping to real-time detect what's a healthy plant, what's an unhealthy plant, and spray only on the unhealthy plants. Or also look at weeds and crops and spray herbicide only on the weeds. So that's a very simple problem to put on a slide like this. Super difficult problem to execute in rural India. And uh, I'll walk you through what we have done. Uh, this is our product that we launched. We have a fleet of these sprayers out, uh, actually operational even today. This is actually a cotton farm. And you can see these red dots on top of the sprayer. These red dots are our cameras and it real time detects, are you a foliar uh, crop or are you a weed? And then it specifically sprays only on the crop. So in a field like this, you can see there is a lot of gap between the rows. In this case, it's five feet. Uh, whereas if you just deploy the sprayer with our, without our technology, all the spray will hit the soil and it won't even hit the plant. It's complete waste and we're polluting our soil. So very simple idea again, spray where the crop is, don't spray the soil. And to do that, you need this tech stack of cameras, algorithms, and action. And we were able to deploy our technology across five different states in India, ranging from Punjab, Gujarat, uh, Southern Madhya Pradesh. By the way, Southern Madhya Pradesh is the least talked about agriculture area in India. And I think it's the most progressive farmers that we have seen uh, in terms of risk-taking ability, size, and the ability to spend. And, um, and obviously, with the retreating monsoon right now, we are operating in Guntur, Andhra Pradesh, May to Tamil Nadu region. And uh, I can get into the business model, uh, but essentially spray where the crop is, don't spray the soil. And it has resulted in tremendous benefits for the farmer. Uh, to just double click on the tech, I like to break the tech into three different parts. It's the eyes, brains, and hands. The eyes are the camera. So it's ability to look at the field, look at every plant, make a judgment call. The brains are the onboard compute. We're able to, you know, real time detect these plants. It's a challenging work because your the machine is moving and you have to take in the data, you have to compute in real time, and then finally also take action. In our case, it's spring. So to do all this within, uh, you know, hundreds of milliseconds is a true engineering problem worth solving, and it's very satisfying to see when you're precisely centimeter level spraying pesticide on the crop and not spraying pesticide on the soil. Uh, I think uh, this is a bit of a video. I don't think it's going to stream super smoothly, but just for all of you to see, this is a chili plant. You can see the nozzles uh, go on and off, on and off. So it's spraying specifically on the chili and, and wherever the soil is, the nozzles are going off. So um, in chili, it's especially useful because the every acre of chili gets sprayed 17 times in one season. Um, this is a little bit underneath the hood. Uh, what how is what is AI? What's this hype around AI and 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 cameras? Uh, the red box is localizing where the cotton plant is. The green number is the probability with which the AI thinks that this is a cotton plant. So that's eighty percent. This is hundred uh, percent. You know, so on and so forth. And you see the weeds don't get detected as cotton. So we are able to uh, you know localize where the crop is and specifically spray. So. You've heard about AI a lot. I'm trying to put uh, 
a face to the name. Essentially, that's, this is what AI is, put a red box uh, to simplify it. Um, uh, in addition to kind of the what's underneath the hood, this is what the driver uh, console is. You have the ability to actually figure out how much you want to spray on every crop. When does this nozzle start before the plant, after the plant? So it's ultra high level precision that we have given uh, our farmers to use. And, uh, and I think to summarize what we have seen this season, uh, we actually offered spot spraying as a service this season across seven states. Um, so the farmer would essentially pay anywhere between 200 to 500 rupees per acre for every acre he needs to spray. And the results are staggering. So especially early stage cotton, uh, we have seen you actually need only 40% of the pesticides that's currently being sprayed. And the rest of the pesticides simply being wasted on spraying on the soil. So what we saw is the same tank of uh, sprayer that we had. Instead of using all the chemical on that one acre, this spray was then moved across, you know, two acres or two and a half acres, 2.2 acres. So you're doing way more with less amount of chemical. So that's one. Uh, from a climate standpoint, which is the theme of this, nothing can kind of uh, hit the bullseye. We are we are using less water. We are using less chemical. And ultimately, all the chemical residue that we see on a soil with the earthworms getting killed, other, other you know, beneficial uh, uh, pests getting killed by blanket spring, now we are able to solve that. A super interesting takeaway from this season is what we thought would just be, you know, bottom line saving in terms of pesticide. We actually saw the reverse. As soon as you save 50, 60 percent on a per acre level, farmers then started choosing a higher grade pesticide than the generic pesticide. So instead of just saving costs, now they walked into the shop, pesticide shop. And if you walk into a rural pesticide shop, you'll see all the generic pesticides occupy 80 percent. And there'll be one corner with all the ultra premium pesticides. Uh, now the farmer was able to choose that premium pesticide because his cost per acre has reduced significantly. So essentially people are getting more bang for the buck, higher efficacy in terms of uh, using spot spraying as a service. Uh, the other interesting thing that uh, probably Sandeep and I should discuss is as India is moving also from kind of granular sprayer to foliar sprayer, uh, we enable higher premium foliar, foliar fertilizers to be sprayed using our system. So we are able to exactly control how much per plant fertilizer it gets through spraying. And this can be extremely beneficial. Again, uh, early stage, if you spray at the right dosage at the right time, you can have extremely beneficial yield consequences in terms of that. Uh, so we've done the hard work. We put these machines on the farm. We figured out a way to get farmers to pay for it, which is again, like very challenging from a business standpoint. Uh, so what else can we do? What we found is as every time we spray on a per acre field, we also collect data. And that data, we can now figure out which areas of the farm have uh, a disease outbreak. So essentially, our cameras can act as an MRI or an X-ray for the farm, almost real time. And one thing that you'll see is most of uh, pesticide uh, prescriptions are done by the dealer. Uh, there's probably very good dealers out there in India, but there's also very incentive-driven dealers, pesticide dealers out there. Uh, they're willing to push their product because they have some incentive. So now we almost have plant level data. So to the level that Mr. Patel, who owns six acres, row number six, plant number nine, 12, 15, we figured out that there's a thrips attack here. And now that data can be sent to the pesticide dealer and he can say, please apply this insecticide. So uh, I don't. This is not super crystal ball stuff. It's happened this season, and we are able to actually make our Indian farmers benefit from this cutting edge uh, hardware plus software combo. Uh, and finally, from a business model perspective, it's expensive tech. I don't think any farmer should buy this machine, uh, but the spray as a service model has worked very well for us. And, uh, you know, uh, as long as you are able to willing to spend about 
three, four hundred, five hundred rupees per acre uh, to to use our technology, uh, you're a welcome customer for us. So that's a quick summary of our tech, our journey, where we are. Uh, you know, we, we are kind of spraying on these crops, cotton, tomato, brinjal, soybean and castor. Uh, we have four million images that we have collected over the last three years. And essentially that is our defensibility in our, in our business. Uh, just to do something fun, we try to model our robots in a simulation environment. So this is what a simulation environment looks like. Uh, we actually model each and every plant. Uh, since we have to execute on a in a millisecond uh, level, so we were able to actually simulate before we go to the plant on the field. Um, I think if there's any robotics enthusiasts there, it's fun to do this. Uh, this is a mechanical weeding product. Um, and uh, finally, yeah, this is this is the this is the uh, mechanical weeder product that we kind of paused. Uh, it essentially tills the soil. It's real time detects moves the blades and aligns itself to the cotton crop and it opens and shuts to uh, uh, to deweight this. Uh, so uh, I'll kind of stop here. I think there'll probably be more fun engaging with folks uh, in terms of questions that they have. But I think in summary, uh, I'm excited about, you have these giants of the world, which is Mahindra, John Deere, uh, Bayer, Syngenta on the chemical side. I think my mission is, in the ag robotics world, can Tartan Sense be the next John Deere or the next Mahindra uh, in the next 10 years? It's a sunrise industry and uh, we want to compete globally. We want to bring this technology to Indian farmers and we shouldn't uh, be humble about what we're doing and we need to compete and win in this sector. Uh, so I think uh, that's our story and hopefully uh, happy to answer any questions. Oh, you do have a few questions and uh, you answered it. First of all, you know, uh, compliments to you, Jay. I mean, um, it's it's not only a concept, you have a number to uh, what you have done. Um, uh, the, to begin with, I mean, uh, deployment of this technology, does that require any uh, change to the cropping which uh, traditionally the farmers are doing or prevalent in India in terms of crops? You did mention few crops. I mean, right. is there any you know yeah. restriction regulation to adopt? No, I think is uh, it all comes down to row to row spacing. So mm -hmm. for the sprayer to enter the field, we need minimum I think three feet or two and a half feet row to row. So uh, if it's less than that, it becomes hard for us to spray. And what about the height? So this uh, the clearance of the the machine is about four feet, I think. So uh, it's like specific, it's specifically designed for later stage spraying on, on cotton. So early stage, we are able to do everything and up to four feet, we're able to spray. So you did mention about the cost, which is about 400 bucks uh, per acre, right? Yeah. I think this is very good, but one of our viewer has asked is that, how does that compare to the manual spraying? Uh, it depends on region. Uh, so in the south, uh, manual spraying is hit 400 rupees. So it's a direct substitution. In Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, it's probably around 200, 240. So it's 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 a premium to manual spray. So the other question is that you know, uh, what's the demand uh, like, and are you able to service that demand? Because you did mention about the business model, which is like you know. So currently, if you if you can and want to, I mean, how is this working? I mean, it's something that you deploy or there are people who are in between? Yeah, I think uh, it's a work in progress. This season, what we did is we did the entire thing ourselves. And it's definitely not a demand problem. So uh, it's only a logistical problem. How do you How do you maximize acreage of spraying on a given day? So uh, knapsack saving, knapsack spring, human spring, I think those days are numbered. It's very inefficient. It's bad for the human. All kinds of you know nasty things can happen. Uh, so if you go to the more progressive areas, like I said, Barwani district in Madhya Pradesh, uh, Guntur in Andhra Pradesh, you can almost see a glimpse of what the future of Indian farming is. Um, you know, proper spacing, precision sowing. Uh, you know, specific spraying. Um, so I don't think it's a demand problem. Uh, the way we have done it is we have given, we did it ourselves this season. 
I think leveraging village level entrepreneurs is the way to go. And, uh, and I think once it starts, uh, then I think village level entrepreneurs is the way to scale. Have you observed any, uh, I mean, impact of uh, those wheels on plans while doing this because of the size of the machine? Yeah, I think minimal. I think uh, these wheels are super thin uh, wheels specifically designed for reducing soil compaction. Um, I think what's interesting is uh, you, if you go again, if you go to areas that fully have embraced, uh, you know, machine-based spraying, farmers have actually optimized to the degree where the machine needs to enter. Those rows are wider and the subsequent rows are narrower and then it'll be wide again. So they have actually sowing and, uh, and farming according to the distance of the boom and the machine. Um, so, so that's when again, I think, uh, soil compaction, this, this machine is made to reduce soil compaction. It weighs a ton as, as opposed to, you know, um, a tractor, which is two tons. Preeti has a question for you. Go on, go ahead, Preeti. Yeah. Hi, Jay. So I'm, a, I'm audible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jay, uh, uh, on the functionality part of it, so I just had a doubt. So one of our products has a soluble, we work with biologicals Fantastic. and, uh, uh, one of our products has a solubility to the average of 99 to 99.5%, right? So there's uh, less than, uh, you know, uh, uh, did I say it right? 0.1% uh, is the average, uh, you know, uh, impurity which you might find in that. So when we use it in your machine, if it, right. if it all it's used, so uh, how efficient are the nozzles? Like what is the tolerance level is what I wanted to know. Yeah, I think uh, I probably don't have a minimum spec on the solubility front, but we we use a 80 degree hollow cone nozzle that we have tested on multiple uh, insecticides. Uh, I think on the fertilizer front, we have ran into issues because the granular size it is not like you said. There's a bunch of residue; it tends to clog the nozzle. But uh, I can kind of check and let you know. Uh, I think the biological space is, is a space that I'm extremely excited about. Uh, once we get over the hump of, you know, mechanized uniform spring, I think the next step logically is bringing biologicals, expensive foliar spraying. Um, and these, these yield numbers are embarrassing to be honest. Like, uh, why is it one third of the U S God has given us amazing soil. Magically, the monsoon comes on June 7th every year. Uh, like everything is going for us. Uh, so, I you know we need a we need, it's our job to make sure that our farmers are growing more from the same acreage. Uh, so, I think your biological solution, some of the other things, um, you can you can look at us as a printer, and you're the ink cartridge, uh, and you put the ink cartridge in our printer, and we'll, we'll kind of print it for you. But on the on minimum so spec far, front, uh, I can I can let yeah. you know. So so far, uh, biologicals have not been tested in your machines. No, we haven't. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, um, one more question is about you know can this be deployed in tea where the density is very high? Uh, the problem with tea is undulating terrain, so this cannot be deployed in undulating terrain. We it needs to be flat. Have you gone out of India as of now? We are having our first deployment in Kenya in a couple of months. Excellent, Jay. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, pretty exciting and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thanks for having so me. Now we move on to the, uh, to the lady participant. And uh, now my, my apologies, Preeti. I should have taken you at the top, actually. Uh, but um, just now, now it's not that late. Okay, so uh, start with your introduction and you know, jump onto the technology and what you would like to share with audience. Yeah, I'll just share my screen. Yeah, 
so I'm Dr. Preeti Kalko. So I'm representing uh, Natura Crop Care. Uh, so we specialize in uh, microbial derivative products, and uh, that is for uh, sustainable agricul uh, agriculture inputs for uh, crop protection and uh, crop health management. So uh, the scenario what we're seeing is uh, very correctly, actually most of the co-panelists have covered this, even uh, Randi sir, that uh, no, Indian soil is fatigued less than 90% uh, carbon uh, is there. So the CN ratio has decreased, there is increase in inputs and uh, the climate change is bringing about uh, loss in productivity. So those figures are for India alone, about 35% yield losses. So that is one aspect of it, uh, which uh, you know the climate change does. The other aspect is uh, the emissions which are there, uh, the uh, inputs which we use in agriculture is 4.2%. Uh, and that is the second largest sector globally. The first is the energy and the second is the agriculture. And in, and, in the total, uh, the greenhouse gases emitted from agriculture, there is 6.2% of uh, you know, nitrous oxide. Uh, this looks small, but then uh, this uh, nitrous oxide is a very notorious you know, uh, gas. It has got uh, 300 times more potential to, uh, you know, for the greenhouse effect. So, uh, so the present solutions are not climate uh, resilient and uh, most of the chemicals are being banned and uh, there are no alternatives. So our approach is a holistic method, which uh, not only gives uh, efficient pest control, but also nutrient use efficiency. And uh, our products, uh, they also, uh, we claim a reduction in carbon footprint uh, because they replace the contemporary agri inputs, the synthetic uh, components. Uh, which, uh, you know, half of it, which you apply the synthetics, the nutrient goes off the drain. Only 50% is available for the plant to take it up. And we have uh, several uh, global recognitions for our innovations. So what exactly are our innovations? So first is our consortium based approach. So we have a few patented products, uh, which is a consortia and it helps in reintegrating of uh, beneficial microbes into agriculture system. And uh, there are a number of benefits of it, but relevant to the topic, they help in you know, uh, biotic and abiotic stress tolerance and overall uh, wellness of the crop. So our next approach is uh, cell-free extracts. And uh, uh, this is our plant in the unit. So uh, we, uh, uh, have a cellular component of products and some without the cells. So they primarily, uh, you know, are faster in action and uh, relevant to the topic uh, to climate change. This products will not be affected by, you know, the climate change. Uh, say the viability of the cell is lost, hence the potency is lost and the activity is lost. So those kind of things uh, is uh, mitigated in this range of products. And uh, these are a few of the uh, initial experiments of the product, uh, you know, effect on germination and uh, target pest. Yeah, so our third approach is actually a crop specific uh, package of practices. And uh, this uh, addresses, you know, the, uh, the varied uh, requirement of the crop uh, for the nutrients across its growth stage. And uh, we have standardized this uh, through a number of uh, you know, agriculture universities. And uh, we have uh, 35 such uh, uh, package of practices. Yeah, so our range of products, they include uh, biofertilizers, biopesticides, biostimulants, crop specific micronutrients. We have trap and shelf life enhancers. And uh, uh, we deal with a range of crops, including spices, rice, uh, maize, paddy, uh, flowers, uh, fruits, and vegetables. So some of our innovative uh, products to emphasize on. Uh, so our three of our products, which are uh, now uh, running on IFCO window, so manufactured by us, is All Rounder Plus, Trigun, and uh, Nirangel. So uh, these products uh, are, uh, are innovations. Of, some of them are consortia and, uh, yeah. 
so the other is sona which is uh, you know it, this has a potential of replacing the synthetic uh, fertilizer because it uh, helps in you know uptake of uh, potassium and uh, phosphorus and also is very effective against uh, you know fungal pests so uh, this product as you say uh, you know uh, hindi mein jo bolte hai ek teer do nishana so uh, that is uh, you know uh, underlying principle behind all our bio biologicals they are not only uh, effective in uh, you know increasing the yield they also deal with the uh, pathogen pests and they increase the soil fertility yeah this is one of our patented products uh, it's the world first chiromon based uh, biomimetic uh, trap it traps both female and male flies we know that whatever products are available in the market they trap only the male flies but it's the female uh, flies who actually cause the damage uh, so this is based on uh, the chiromon system and uh, it attracts both the males and females and uh, uh, according to our studies it ha it gives uh, less than 2% damage and uh, this has been uh, validations are ongoing in andhra in karnataka uh, in telangana yeah so uh, next is our uh, biological bactericide it is uh, as i said is, it is effective in uh, you know controlling the uh, target pest and it has uh, varied other features that enhances the food quality and uh, the soil fertility uh, we also have uh, organic uh, bio herbicide so the impact uh, the our products have, can replace 70% of npk utilization of the synthetics and uh, reduces the labor cost up to 50% and there's a average yield increase of 27% and uh, we have grown uh, from 200 farmers when we started to 2.5 lakh farmers now across uh, various states in india uh, 18 states and uh, trials are un undergoing in 10 countries including bhutan and brazil we are uh, recognized in the maitri program uh, the indo brazil program and uh, uh, also in the bhutan organics where our products are uh, being uh, tried up and uh, we actually meet uh, nine uh, global sustainable goals so we are basically farmer centric and uh, relevant to the topic uh, we are uh, very eco friendly target specific you know uh, and reducing the use of chemicals yeah so our customers basically uh, these are the uh, picture of uh, you know the actions we've been having uh, national international uh, co-panelist uh, sandeep so we we are also partners uh, in some of our projects and uh, these are a key key milestones uh, so uh, we are recognized by global forum for innovation in agriculture abu dhabi we have had trending from uh, ktech and byrac and maitri program as i said and uh, we're also awarded the startup of the year uh, the smart buy awards by government of karnataka and finalists in the national startup award so future readiness these are the products which we are uh, working for and we want a metal metabolite based biological fungicide and we want to have post harvest products biological bactericide organic herbicide and uh, scheme semiochemical based insect traps so coming to the summary we have been able to you know uh, generate 240 plus crore additional income to marginal farmers and uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking about real marginal farmers uh, we've been to you know some of the parts in up where the uh, meal plan is uh, two meals or one meals a day so we've been able to reach to such farmers and 100 such women vlees actually and uh, the our products uh, give no residue so there's a 90 percent export quality produce it's in line with natural organic farmer and it also integrates with all kind of farming uh, ipm uh, all our products are compatible with ipm practices and uh, the income which has been generated is uh, 60,000 to 1.6 lakhs annually to a marginal farmer and uh, these are some of our engagements 
and uh, that's our team. Yeah, so any questions? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Preeti. You know, uh, the first very generic question, you know, uh, are you finding traction with farmers? Uh, are you experiencing any resistance? Uh, yeah, uh, initially, actually, uh, the farmer doesn't want to use biologicals. Uh, that has been up. Uh, we've been in this field for more than a decade, and since then till now, the first reaction of the farmer will be he doesn't want to try a biological since it takes time. But then, uh, you know, uh, with repeated use, they see the result. So that has been the trend in the biologicals. So, is there an effect on the yield actually? I mean, the negative one or the positive? No negative. No, no. There's no negative effect on the yield. There has always been a positive uh, effect, actually. Uh, I forgot to put the cost-benefit ratio. That would have given you a better picture. So uh, all our products actually give you a cost-benefit ratio from an average of 1 is to 10 is to 1 is to 20. So that's the range we claim. I, it, it goes more than that, but we claim only that. So how does that, you know, goes in terms of apple to apple com comparison on a per unit basis when you compare that to the chemical uh, ones? Yes, that is on the chemical basis, uh, especially like a trap, which I was telling. Uh, so we had this uh, validation going on in a, a field in uh, Karnataka and uh, uh, where the other, the generic trap was placed, uh, the cost benefit ratio was uh, 1 is to 10. And uh, even the use of that, there was a 30% infestation of the turpitated fruit flies. But where, with our product, there was less than 2% and the cost benefit ratio was 1 is to 20. So uh, that is the range we are talking about. Good. Any co-panelist has a question? Uh, because now I'm going to open it to co-panelists and once again, take a round with viewers. If they have any question to anybody, they can ask. So I already have. I, I think I yeah. think Dr. Preeti, we, we need a chat offline. I think uh, we'll love to see your product on on our sprayers and see how we can kind of uh, help you kind of scale as well. Definitely. Okay, good. So there is a question to uh, Sandeep actually. Uh, how many parameters of the soil are you guys checking? Currently, we have uh, 12 parameters, 12 plus 2 we have. So we have uh, NPK, organic carbon, pH, EC, sulfur, boron, iron, zinc, copper. And then uh, optionally, we also provide uh, calcium, magnesium, and magnesium. And uh, we are also including uh, in, uh, uh, in another three months of time to so the validation is going on, where we'll also be able to provide uh, the biological factors. Uh, so that will be... Uh, specific bacterial presence and also its uh, quantification, beneficial, non-beneficial uh, for fungi, bacteria, and also nematodes. So uh, one question is, you know, have you actually done any comparison with, you know, your research vis-a-vis -vis either the other lab, whether it is a government or non-government, which is using alternate methodology? And if that is done, have you seen any disparity or uh, discrepancy? So uh, the, our technology, so uh, this has been uh, it's a it's a co-innovation between uh, uh, Krishi Tantra and uh, also the methodologies which are there from uh, one of the ICR institutes. Uh, so we also had recently signed an after validation uh, of uh, the methodologies which were already existing. So we integrated those methods and uh, at par with, uh, with the conventional lab, it has found uh, about nearly 90 to 95 percent of accuracy in comparison with the conventional. Uh, system. Good. Uh, there is a question to Jay. Actually, uh, is the vehicle uh, electrical or uh, diesel slash petrol? No, it's a it's a petrol engine. I yeah. guess, but that's a that's a no. I mean, you can always um, move on to electrical, right? I mean, yeah, this... yeah. I think when the time's right. Yeah. Good. There is a very um, interesting question, I you know, to all the panelists. Uh, I mean, you say the question talks about uh, what you have this double burning, right? So, um, when the viewer feels that uh, this double burning used to be a traditional 
I mean, good solution and that was helping in in general. But now it's a big problem. So are you guys have you know um, working on something around that, or will any of this technology contribute to that? Prima facie, I don't think so. However, you know, if you have any plans, ideas, because this is one of the thing which I mean, um, as an India, we are, we are facing currently. I think there have been uh, attempts uh, at using these, you know, self-propelled sprayer booms to uh, spray defoliant and other kinds of chemicals to essentially reduce the stubs that are left left behind uh, by by the harvesters. I think there has been success in that. So we are, we are not in that business, but there are other companies. I think the sponsor of this event, uh, UPL, is probably doing some work around. How do they use these fleets of, uh, you know, these sprayers to to prevent burning? Maybe you know, uh, Doctor Preeti, in your you know some sprays. Uh, that's an area where you can convert that stubble into a friendly uh, manure. Uh, I think that's some. And so far, while there are things around such a solution, but uh, farmers' ability to easily deploy it it uh, has been a main challenge so we need to really look at something which is deployable easily so wonderful i mean we started uh, with testing the soil um, then we uh, went on to the technology until uh, the robot and then came back to um, biological methodologies uh, there is one last question I see that has come for uh, Preeti. Um, that's about bioherbicides. Would you like to show, you know, throw some light on that, how successful that has been? Yeah, that is, we are just in the initial stages and uh, we just uh, you know, testing uh, uh, the initial uh, strains for that. We are also looking at uh, you know, plant extracts so no, uh, it's very preliminary so i would not like to disclose anything on that anything um i know you have really assessed in terms of any toxic impact on the plants uh no uh, uh, as i said it's just the building of the product so far now so we have not looked at the toxicity of it on the plants itself we're just looking for the efficacy of it on the weeds the the uh, beads itself as of now. Excellent. So I take this opportunity to once again thank you all for taking your time and sharing uh, your technologies and uh, CII for organizing this and viewers for attending this. You all have a lovely evening. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, panelists, for a very informative session. I would also like to thank our partners, ITC, PI Industries, Mahindra, Taffy, Ulam, and Gotiva. I also express my sincere gratitude to the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare for their support. As part of the B20 Secretariat, we will continue the dialogue on ag tech throughout the year with physical meets and look forward to meeting all of you face-to-face -face for the same. I invite you all to join our next session on IoT in Agriculture, which uh, begins at 5.30. IST. Thank you once again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.